Hi, I'm Kristen Slein, a certified role for a massage therapist and somatic Pilates instructor. What your mechanic does for your car is what I do for your body. Repair, performance optimization, and maintenance. So you're about to watch the first rolfing session in the series. Rolfing is a hands-on technique that works to improve your biomechanics and improve your awareness. So not only are we optimizing how your body functions, but we're teaching your brain how to naturally take care of your body all by itself without anybody intervening. So in these sessions, there's a combination of increasing your awareness to the things that's going on in your body. As humans, we go into autopilot. So you think of this as if you've driven to work before and, and didn't remember if you hit all the stoplights on the way there. That's autopilot. You got there, you knew how to do it, but you weren't sure about all of the things that happened in the middle. We do this within our body. Tension becomes habitual. The way that we breathe or walk is something we don't think a lot about. And so in this series, we're gonna spend a lot of time thinking about and noticing what's happening within our body during these experiences. This first session today is gonna to go over breathing and what it feels like, what we notice about breathing. My job is to notice the mechanics of your ribs and your body and to help improve those. And your job is to notice what things feel like. By just noticing, by thinking about it, you don't even have to have all of the answers, but by just thinking about these things, we get your brain on board with the bodily changes happening. And this is gonna create a long-term sustainable change within your mechanics. Thinking about it will be the piece that helps your brain to create long-term changes and as well as learning how to take care of this and provide for results for the future. So stay tuned. Um, I'm gonna get, do Emily's assessment in movement. I'm gonna have her walk quite a bit. I'm gonna ask her quite a few questions and then we'll jump back in and you guys can view the hands-on portion. All right, Emily, so we're gonna evaluate your breathing again. So just one more time, take a couple of deep breaths in for me and notice what you feel move. So now that I've given you a chance after the walking assessment to start thinking about it, your mind and your brain are already communicating a little bit more. So sometimes when we do this a second time, we get more depth to it. We can feel more things, we can feel less things. Sometimes it's identical to the question before and nothing <laughs> has changed and that's okay too. So okay. I just wanted to give your brain and your mind a, a minute to digest what we talked about mm -hmm. and then do the breathing again and see if anything changed. Okay. All right. I feel like I can feel it more in the front of my chest okay. now rather than the sides. I don't know why, but... Oh, we don't have to have answers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah. breathing standing and breathing laying down are very different experiences for your body. So let's go ahead and lay with your head at this end of the table, okay. looking at your back or looking at the ceiling. On your back, looking at the ceiling. Okay. There we go. Sunny side up. <laughs> How are you lying flat? Do you need any pillows to feel more supported or comfortable? No, I feel comfy. Okay. How's the temperature on the table? Very nice. Okay. Very good. If we slowly start to roast you, let me know. Okay. All right. So go ahead and give yourself another deep breath or two and see what you can feel. If it's the same as standing or if you notice something different. I definitely feel my chest coming closer to my face. Okay. <laughs> Do you feel your belly, your belly button expand up towards the ceiling or in towards your body? Up towards the ceiling. Okay. Does that feel like it's equally as easy, the belly coming up as it is for your chest to come up, or does one feel easier? My chest feels like it comes up easier. Okay. That's what I see too. There's a little bit more, I can, the tension under your rib cage is more noticeable. Under here? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and even the right in the front of your belly here is it's a little more noticeable that that's like, oh, can't push out any further than that. Yeah. Can't get any more Buddha belly there if yeah. I wanted to. <laughs> the muscles are just just held over really strong, which is a good thing. We all want a strong core, but we don't <laughs> want it to impede on things like breathing. Right. So um, strength without compromise. All right, I'm going to adjust my table here. Okay. <clears throat> So even though we do have a predominant amount of tension in your lower rib cage, I'm still going to work your upper rib cage because that's going to help your mind and your brain communicate about that region a little more efficiently. So okay. we'll do, still do work all over. I might tug on your arms. I might tug on your legs. We'll, we'll see where the hour takes us. Okay. 
All right, so at any point my contact feels uncomfortable, let me know. This shouldn't be painful. Okay. It might be a little, there might be areas that are a little intense, like you know, you know you're getting touched or getting work done, but it shouldn't be enough to make you want me to stop. How are you doing with that contact? Fine. Okay. I'm going to have you slowly start to open this arm like a T. So just this left side is going to open up. Good, nice and slow. Okay, there's some nerves right through here, so if I hit one, it's going to make your fingers tingle. It's not going to cause damage, but you'll know that I'm doing it. Yeah, I feel it in my, like, forearm. Yeah. Bit. Okay, I want you to spread your fingers out. And now I want you to point your whole, all of your fingers up towards the top of your head, so you're bending your wrist. So, other way. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, that might create a little more tingles in there. I also feel that in my forearm. Yeah. Interesting. Good. Go ahead and let your hand relax. Feel how when you let your hand relax, that all like softens yeah, there? Yeah, that was weird. That's all right. Go ahead and bring your arm back down. Okay. So definitely, you know, it's not necessarily painful, but it is weird. Yeah. Like it's, it's different. Definitely a sensation there. So people come in and they assume that, you know, like rolfing and massages, they're similar. Until we start the session and they're like, oh, just kidding. Right. Touch is the only thing that's similar is that I'm being touched. Right. Yeah, it's kind of a little physical therapy-ish. Yeah. Roll kind of. your palm and this whole arm towards the ceiling. and then try to let it relax. <laughs> Weird. Could Good. you describe this as body work right now? Yes, so all of rolfing is body work. Rolfing just applies a specific recipe to it. We're gonna take the sessions in a specific order and look at specific joints during each session. So each session is gonna have a little bit of um, a territory or a goal to it. Whereas body work is a little bit more like, Oh, you're having trouble with your shoulder? Let's work on your shoulder today. So the camera is probably picking up that it looks like my hands are really, like your skin is a little deformed from where my fingers are. Mm. Does it feel painful? It is definitely more intense. This is the most intense feeling that I've had so far. Okay. What would you describe that it feels like? Stretching. I think it feels like when we like if we could just stretch one inch of a muscle. Yeah. Instead of but like the whole, whole thing. power still though. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm making 
your stomach make noise now? I, say, I got a little bit going on in there. <laughs> I think most people get weirded out by having their stomach touched. Do they? A lot of people do. Because it's not... Doesn't touch my tummy. Yeah. Little, yeah, it's a little... People are like, uh, guess. nobody does that. Can you feel your own pulse in there? Yeah. <laughs> So you'll find that I often take my hands off and just watch what your body does to that. So when I'm, t when I'm using hands on touch, I'm communicating with your brain, right? So your mm -hmm. brain is the thing that receives all the signals from your body and figures out what to do with it. Okay. So when I'm touching you, your brain is processing all of that. And sometimes it, it's, like a, it's like the delay in a computer. Okay. It just needs a second to catch up. Makes sense. And then it helps at that point when we kind of give it a second, sometimes things percolate into your mind of like, oh, wow. I just took a deep breath and that was easier. Or, oh, that's, uh, that's, that's uncomfortable. So occasionally I take my hands off and just watch what happens. <laughs> I definitely, I feel it more in my stomach when I take a deep breath now. Or in, yeah, lower in my stomach now. Yeah. Yeah, and it Good. definitely shows that it's, we're getting a lot more in your stomach there. Yeah, I feel like my, yeah, I can expand a little bit more when I'm inhaling. Is that pressure okay back there? Mm -hmm. Did you feel it punch back at me? A little bit. <laughs> a little sassy. Mm -hmm. A little bit. I am looking at, when I traction her arm, how much motion travels through to her thoracic and cervical spine. So I have one hand underneath her shoulder, and I'm just looking at if I traction this, do we get any tug in those muscles? Are they related somehow? Is that tension level somehow connected? Also, our brain really normalizes holding our shoulders as earrings. And it's like, that's my new normal. What are you talking about? I don't have my shoulders in my ears. And you're walking around like hangman. <laughs> and your brain's like, this is totally normal, right? right. So sometimes by tractioning and I give, I give your brain an opportunity to be like, uh, that's, that's four inches lower than I'm used to being. So can you feel that as I traction your hand, your head is starting to move with it? Yes. Right. So if I let go your whole head, huh. yeah. 
Makes sense. I mean, your head is connected to your shoulders, so at some right. point it should move. <laughs> That's normal. But we're gonna see what the tension level is. So I'm just holding your hand in place. I've got, I've got all of your hand, um, the palm of your hand, kind of traction downward towards your feet and then spread open just a little bit. Cause remember that stretch we did and we could feel it in your forearm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have you now roll your head away without lifting it. That is tough. Uh-huh, you feel that? That is very tough. <laughs> your whole arm is now tractioning up against me. Can you feel that going on in there? Okay, so yeah. I want you to pick a stretch level that feels like right at the start of the stretch where you're like, oh yeah, I noticed that, but it's not bad. About right here. Okay. Tolerable. And tolerable, but there. Yeah. Now I want you to take a deep enough breath that you can feel that stretch from the inside. Yeah, did you feel that peak of your inhale there? It pushed yeah. your shoulder? Mm -hmm. Good, you're gonna give me two more of those. Good, bring your head back to center. Oh, I feel like it gradually traveled back that way anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that happens. <laughs> What, what's going on there? <laughs> I'm just processing the way that my arm feels right now. It feels yeah. like lighter than my other arm, maybe. Okay. A little bit. Uh, <laughs> weird stuff happens. Yeah. Interesting. It's good though. It's cool. Just different. Yeah. All right. So you had noticed that the sides of your rib cage had some tension to them. Yes. If that gets to be too much, just let me know. Okay. I didn't even think about it. I should have given myself a manicure. <laughs> Should I be like taking deep breaths while you're doing that or breathing normally or just however I can manage while you're doing that? <laughs> um, there What's are places the that you're going to feel like I need to take a deep breath, like somehow that just released some tension that I didn't know was even there and I want to yeah. use it. Um, do it. Okay. There are other places I'm going to poke, like holding your belly down and you're going to be like, I can't <laughs> breathe. Okay. Do the best you can. Okay. And if you feel like I'm suffocating you, please let me know. Okay. <laughs> Something just cracked. Something okay crack or ouchy yeah. crack? No, just, just a crack. So when you get shoulder tension, is it down here or up at the top? The lower. Yeah, that's <laughs> Okay, so I will try not to digress too far here. Okay. Breathing is controlled by your diaphragm which is a muscle that looks a little bit like a jellyfish. Tentacles and all, so there's fibers of the diaphragm, um, fascia, if you will, that mm -hmm. permeates down and connects to your organs and into your pelvic floor and then transcends down your legs. And, and then there's little tentacles above it that like literally wrap your brain and then come down your neck and wrap your lungs and then wrap your, wrap your diaphragm itself. So these little tentacles go in all sorts of directions, but that's neither here nor there. Oh. What you do need to know is that that little jellyfish drops down towards your feet when you inhale. And that literally pulls air into your body. And then your ribs expand because there's 
air inside your lungs and your belly expands because that muscle is pushing down towards your feet and so your organs have to go somewhere it creates a little bit of a pressure where your belly raises up okay so in the process of inhaling our shoulders actually gently, like millimeters, separate and move out away from our spine, right? So if you think about something expanding, if there was something on top of it, like a shoulder blade, if this is expanding, your shoulder blade can't stay in the same place, it's gotta move with it. Mm -hmm. So as humans, as soft-bellied creatures, we're much more aware of the front of our body and the mind-brain relationship. Our brain is like, you don't need to be aware of that because it's <laughs> always there and your mind is like, okay, so as I'm working, I want you to see if you can intentionally direct some awareness to that back of your body and okay. see if you can feel how your breath and my finger and the pressure is relating to each other. You don't need to make anything of it. It doesn't need to be some like, oh my God, moment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just notice if you can feel it. Okay. Definitely more now that I'm thinking about it. There's a lot more there. Can you feel where that's tense? Yeah. It's like almost a broad line where it's like, mm, I don't know if I want to do that for you. Right. Yeah, definitely resistance there for sure. <laughs> so that is a spinal muscle. We just rolled over one of your, what's called an erector. Wow. And it, it not, doesn't feel good when we play them like guitar strings. <laughs> Good, so I'm going to have you, I'm going to slide under even further, there we go. Go ahead, come back down. Okay, so I'm not going to push any harder. So my fingertips are right between um, some of those spinal muscles. And I want you to just breathe, try to, yes, breathe and try to find the contact of my fingers. So I'm going to take this hand out, and now I want you to see if you can just find this hand. Okay. Okay, we're going to change things up a little bit. You're catching it okay. quick. <laughs> All right, so now my hands are down at the bottom of your rib cage. Okay. This too still moves. Okay. See if you can breathe into. So you got that one. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if I, like, tense up my core... I can or like really exhale as hard as I can. Okay. So see if you can passively find it with your inhale. Just imagine this is happening. Oh. Good. So it's it's not about forcing. Yeah. and take a normal rhythm and cadence. I feel like it's hard to do a normal one now that I'm thinking about it so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the double-edged sword with awareness. Right. And so you're, we learn to breathe this way as babies. This is how we're brought into the world. It's all that adulting on top of it that made us breathe differently, more shallow or more tight, more tense all sorts of life piles up. And so once we wake up that baby memory, your brain's like, I'm not, I'm not going back. What are you, that was horrible. Right. So in some levels, you will, it will require you a little bit of work after our session to remember to breathe this way. But when you remember, it's not gonna be like this laborious, it's like not going to do a workout. It's like, oh yeah, that felt way better. Why am I still doing it this way? All right.
felt tight. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. A lot easier to breathe now. <laughs> Weird. You didn't even realize it was hard before. Nope. Do you ever feel like the tension is more to one direction than the other, or is it always both shoulders? Um, I would say more so on my left side. Okay. I think I put a lot of pressure on that side of my body when I'm sitting down at my desk too, because if I'm like using my mouth with my right hand, then I'm my arm is crossed on my armrest and I'm leaning on it. Okay. You know? Like hand on my chin with my elbow on the armrest. Oh, that makes sense, okay. So I don't know if that contributes to anything, but I find myself doing that a lot. Of course it contributes, right? How much it contributes, that's negotiable. <laughs> Everything we do is going to contribute to our experience. And there's, I mean, short of like mapping your brain, there's no way to be like 28% uh -huh. of your shoulder pain is a result of this action. Right. And that's actually kind of what we're, part of what we're going for in these sessions is for you to be able to, you know, so we, we do this work and we highlight to your mind and your brain what your body is experiencing. And so you go and do one of these actions again and you're like, oh, right. No wonder my shoulders hurt. Right. Your brain had totally normalized and been like, Emily does this so many times throughout the day. It's not killing her. Let's not make an awareness of this being a pain contributor. And then afterwards, it's so apparent that you're like, oh, this is horrid. Right. And so then you just don't want to do it, which is our ultimate goal. Right. Yeah, it goes back to fixing posture and yeah, it's all connected. It is a, <laughs> it is a big circle. It's just not the way that people think it is. We assume that posture is this, like it's your bone structure only. Well, it's also how your mind inhabits your body. Yeah. If you don't have an awareness of something you're doing that hurts, then how are you supposed to change it? You, you can't change what you can't measure and you're not aware of. So if we can increase our awareness, then we can increase the potential for making changes before something becomes um, a bad habit or painful. Hmm. Makes sense. I try to be logical <laughs> with it. <laughs> All right, so the camera might start to pick up that you are turning nice and red for me. <laughs> Some of us pale people turn red real easily. Oh, yeah. But my more important question is if it's uncomfortable. No, my skin is very sensitive, so. Mm, you and me both, sister. Do not be alarmed. <laughs> <laughs> it's the curse of the, the pale skin. Right. We're getting to the time of year where I'm going to start to look like Casper. You can see my veins poking through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this arm's a little different than the other one. I was going to say, when you were doing it on my other arm, there was a lot more sensation. There's not, not as, much. as much over here. I noticed more in your thumb. Yeah, maybe. I guess I wasn't thinking about my hand, specifically. All 
All right, stretch your fingers out for me. Do you write with this hand? Yes. Good, let everything relax. Your thumb had like started migrating over <laughs> here. <laughs> nope, you belong out there. <laughs> Turn your head to the left. Oh. A lot of tugging. Yeah, bring it back for me. All right, turn your head to the left again. All right, just find a good tension level. It's as far as you want to go. You get to choose your own adventure. <laughs> this is good. All right, so. I want you to nod your head up and down just a little bit. Weird. What are you experiencing with it? Tingling, kind of pokey. Pokey where I'm holding you or pokey somewhere else? Pokey in my hand, in my thumb. Oh, I don't even have your thumb in my hand. <laughs> or, uh, oh, yeah, I guess not. That's okay. Yeah, somewhere down there it's poking. Is it if you lift your head or if you tuck your head or the whole time? If I lift my head, no, down, that's when I look down. When I lift my head, I kind of feel it in my upper arm, yeah. my bicep. So we're looking at just different vectors of muscle connection. You know, in anatomy books, they, our muscles look really clean, like, oh, this is where this one ends and the next one begins. Really, it's all giant connection in there. They all right. kind of flow from one to the next. So when we pull on you in different ways, we can get different vectors of those connections. Could turn your head to the left just a little. There you go. That's all. <laughs> oh, we found that forearm. Whoa. How weird, like the slightest movement. And stretch your index finger. Did that change it? Yeah, definitely more intense. Good, take a nice deep breath into it. <laughs> One more. <laughs> Good, bring your head back. <laughs> Gotta have one blooper. <laughs> Ooh, world spun around. Whoa. Whoa, what is it? That was a lot. That was weird. Feels it's like relaxing now. Like my foot was asleep and then, it, or my arm's asleep and now it's waking up kind of. Yeah, yeah. It was weird. I'll choose to think of it as reinvigorated with life, even yeah. though yeah, it's yeah. probably more nerve related, <laughs> but that sounds more fun. Exactly. Okay. Take a deep breath for me. Look at how much easier that belly goes. <laughs> All right, one more deep breath. I feel like it didn't that time. <laughs> That's okay. Let it be organic. However it comes out is how it comes out. All right, so when you're ready, I'm gonna have you come all the way up to standing, but I wanna make you aware that when you come up to standing, it's not uncommon for your brain to be like, what? did you just do and see you like, I don't know where up and down is. It'll take you a second to find your bearings. Plus our heart rate drops from being touched. That's a relaxing thing and, and kind of lowers our blood pressure and our heart rate. Okay. So those are gonna have to come back up too, which compounds the weird drunken sailor feeling. So take, okay. give yourself a second to find your bearings and then we'll decide okay. how you feel. Got it. We'll give you that. Oh, Excellent. I, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> Interesting. Energy rushed to my feet. <laughs> Weird. Okay. Good. <sighs> okay. Okay. Good. Give yourself a breath or two. Just notice, so we're not doing a comparative to before and after, if there's a difference in what you feel. I want you to purely just notice what it is right now that you feel with your breath. 
just feels lighter, like effortless. More so. <laughs> More than so before. than it was? Yeah. When you didn't even think it took effort then. Right. So now even less effort. That's kind of a nice yeah. difference between things. Okay. A little looser. Looser, I think is a better word. Flexible. Is there anywhere that doesn't feel like that? That doesn't agree? That's like, oh, nope, this is still a thing. I feel like maybe like up here now a little bit. Yeah. Okay. But give me one more deep breath. Maybe that's just more so because I was. Ooh, well, we are not done. I'm going to go in front of you. Yeah. But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. Wait. Okay, so this is like my favoriteest chair, and that's because I can adjust the height on it. And, um, and a friend made it for me, and it happens to be a beautiful piece of art. So that's nice. helpful too. All right, you are going to, so take a step out to the side for me. I'm gonna move this chair all the way up to that carpet line. And you're going to take a seat facing towards the table. Okay. I'm gonna lift this table up, give you some knee room. If I fix my hair, can we edit it out? Yeah. Can I like re-ponytail it quick? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Because I'm going to work on your neck and shoulders, so oh. however you want it. From which I, are you just going to be kind of working around? Um, yes, actually. So we might be better to put this thing on the other side of the room because I'm going to do a lot from behind. So I'm going to come in and do that. I kind of like, I think I can work with okay. that. What's the majority? And, you're going to be doing and then I'm going to have her arms, arms on the table and I'm going to do um, right here in her back. No, I like the lighting right here, okay. let's keep it right here. All right. Plus you can see what you're working on. And so yeah. the, from that side, it's like, oh, well, that's why I was like, oh, what are you looking for? Yeah, because you can't see anything. Context, yeah. yeah. This one's going to be easier. Okay, so we're going to learn a really quick lesson in sitting since this is part of your problem. Okay. Excellent. So okay. I want you to sit however you would normally sit at work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a reality, right? <laughs> reality check. Okay, so let your arms down to your side. If I wanted to push you over, it does not take any work, right? I can push you in any direction I want to. Yes. So if the only thing you changed was pushing into your feet just a little bit, so let's keep your normal crummy posture okay. and then just push into your feet a little bit. Okay, can you feel okay. immediately how you start to like now your crummy posture is a little bit more difficult? It actually feels crummy. Yeah. So pushing into your feet slightly can help. And now, so keep that pressure in your feet. Now you're a lot more work to push over. It gives you a little bit of stability. Your feet are meant for, for stabilizing you. Who would have thought, right? Yeah, right? So we can use them in sitting to force ourselves upright. Like if you're really tired one day and you realize that you're just too tired, get that chair up high, okay. like way higher than that night. You know, we always talk about like, make sure your knees are at a 90 degree angle. Yeah. Get up higher than that. So. Okay. And then you can push into your feet almost like st sitting on a bar stool and it's gonna force your whole upper body to come up. Makes sense. So it's one okay. of those cheater moments of like, well, I'm tired and I don't really wanna sit upright, so I will just force myself. Okay. Yeah. All right, that is also when I do this work on your back gonna keep me from pushing you over. Okay. <laughs> so um, this work, like the stuff on the table, should not be painful or uncomfortable by any means, but occasionally it can be a little tender. Okay. So one, make sure you're stabilized and I'm not pushing you over and you're slowly resisting me so that you don't <laughs> fall on the floor because that will make it more tender too. Okay. And then two, if it's too much, just let me know. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna have you look straight forward in front of you. Give that little bit of pressure in your feet and I'm gonna move the strap over just a little bit because digging fabric in your shoulder doesn't feel good. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I want you to think about holding um, a kettlebell in this hand or bowling ball, take your pick. Okay. That's it. Hmm. Now I want you to look down. Difficult? Yeah, yeah, it's a good joke. <laughs> Only go as far as you want to go. You choose the tension level. Okay. Good. Now you're going to swivel your nose over towards your left armpit. More difficult? <laughs> <laughs> good. Come all the way back to center. All right, so we're gonna do something very similar. I'm just latched in here. Okay. You're gonna take your left ear towards your left shoulder. You choose how far you wanna go. It's about good. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so because you've been practicing yoga for a long time, I'm gonna use that to our advantage. Okay. All right, this isn't like a, so I'm drawing on our back, like this isn't a left angle where you're just like a hard 90 degree angle here. Sure. I want you to think about arcing. Lift that up to the ceiling as it bends over to the side. So you're lifting off of my pressure there, yes. Good, rock your chin, so keep this and then rock your chin downward. You choose your tension level <laughs> and then bring it all the way back. Give yourself a second to process that. That's a lot to deal with. Yeah, that uh, tension level comes up quick. It Quicker does. than I would expect. <laughs> <laughs> For somebody that thought she was in good shape and does yoga multiple times a week. but Right? That's okay. These yeah. are the tension levels you didn't even know you had. Exactly. All right, so look straight ahead for me. Well, hey, I didn't make you too uneven, but we are still gonna do the other side anyway. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes we get this real unevenness where like this shoulder is sitting like two oh. inches lower. And, like, oh, look, we made you crooked. All right, so we're gonna go through the same set of things. Okay. Okay, so use your feet. I'm not gonna add any more pressure than what I've got here, and you're just gonna look down towards your feet. The more you want to forward roll, the more it's gonna force my elbow, my forearm to come down your shoulder. So you know the forward rolls where you're trying to articulate and lift up one vertebrae at a time? Mm -hmm. The more you drop into that motion, the more I'm gonna move. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so you pick where you wanna go. <laughs> Which is probably not very far. Um. <laughs> That's good. And bring yourself back up to straight. Okay. You okay with it? Yep. All right, so we are going to look down. Yeah, I got it. I got more of that muscle mm -hmm. in my arm, so you're going to be more restricted. Now you're going to look over to your right. Yep. Good. Try to tuck that chin down. Good. Come all the way up. Oh. That really illuminates how yeah. tense we are up there. <laughs> yeah, wow. Feels good. So this is always the one that RJ asks me to do. Okay. Hey, you got a second? Can you can you do that arm bar? I want this so bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I am pinning this guy down. You are gonna take your right ear towards your right shoulder. God, imagine there's a, yes. Oh, yeah. Good, I want you to hold your ear over, and now look down. Jeez. <laughs> Good, bring it back up. Oh. <sighs> wow. Was that painful? No, just intense. Yeah, <laughs> a lot. I find that a lot in this work. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit of the same thing. It's gonna feel very different on your lower back, but my goal is somewhat similar. Okay. So you're gonna take your arms and lay them on top of the table. Yep, and now lean forward onto them. So they can be extended all the way out. You can bend your elbows in. You can find a position that feels right to you. Wait, all the way down? Like face on the table? Nope, you're good here. Oh, okay. I just need to be able to get your back. Gotcha. Okay, now look down. Did that increase kind of the stretch in my fingers? Slightly. Yeah, it shouldn't have been significant. Yeah. I feel like I'm gonna be two feet taller in a second. <laughs> Could let your head come up. Okay. 
Tuck that. your head, yeah. For better or worse, this, uh, this work has given me some wicked um, wrist dexterity. Ah, yeah, I bet. But sometimes when the heel of my hand is pushing into you, it can feel a little intense without me meaning it to. <laughs> so you just let me know. You're good. All right, I'm gonna give you something to think about here. Okay. Um, you know the chin tucks that we use? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good, and now try to drop your head further. Good, now I want you to just think about tucking your tail under like a sad puppy. Yes. Good, let everything relax. Sit all the way up tall. You notice anything there that's important or just different? Not super different. Okay, that's perfectly fine. <laughs> okay, I want you to stick your butt out like J-Lo and then tuck it under. Good, stick it out, and then tuck it under, and then out, and under. Good, come to rest. Nice, stretchy. Yeah, <laughs> feel a little more bendy in there now? Yeah, a little bit. All right, I'm gonna have you look straight forward, and then look down. Okay, look back up. Use your feet to resist me. Mm -hmm. Now look down. Good, see if you can find a little roundness right here. Good, let your elbows be heavy. That's it. Good, come back up. Do we just pop in there? <sighs> Whoa, that felt good. All right, let's come all the way up to standing. I want to push this chair out of the way. Turn towards me. Just give yourself a second to find your bearings. Ooh. <laughs> What'd you notice? My exhale was like, I don't know, it feels good. It just feels different. No, it's sometimes hard to put a finger on what, yeah. what that is. Yeah, I can't pinpoint it. It's a little different though. Okay. Sometimes walking makes that really apparent, sometimes not. We don't think about how much work walking is, but it involves a lot of regions in your brain. There's actually a lot of stuff happening. So let's try walking in the hall and see if that feels different. It might, it might not. Um, we're not looking, there. it's not like validation of like, oh, that worked or not. <laughs> okay. We already know it did stuff. We just wanna see if your brain and your mind can, can, communi can communicate more about it. That's a hard set of words. That is. All right. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> so there's a lot of change there. Yeah. What do you feel? I, this is gonna sound silly, but more like steady and not so bouncy, like more neutral. Yeah. That doesn't sound silly at all. <laughs> Sometimes the words that we use to describe things don't actually make sense. Um, stomping like an elephant. Somebody doesn't actually stomp like an elephant, but it makes sense. We know what that means. So right. whatever work, words work for you are correct. I, I notice stand by it. how much your arms swing more than they used to. There's an hmm. ease to them of like, yeah, well, that's just what we do. Hmm. That didn't exist there before. Excellent. Okay. All right. Nice. Let's head back in. Okay. 
All right, so these are kind of the final thoughts that I'm gonna leave you with. Okay. Breathing is literally affected by every emotion and thought. Sometimes we get shorter breaths, sometimes deeper, sometimes more shallow, more chest, more belly. It should change. We wanna be adaptable. That's what's good for us, right. right? You don't wanna be stuck in doing one thing forever. You don't wanna hyperventilate for the rest of your life. It would be a <laughs> panic attack nightmare. Ugh, be exhausting. It would. So I want you to just become aware of what are your habits with breathing. And okay. once or twice a day or more, I want you to take five or six concerted deep belly breaths. This okay. rib tension will set back in if we go back into our old breathing pattern. So we just need to be conscious and try at some point in the day to interrupt that cycle and be like, no, I actually can use more space here than what I thought I had. Cool. Does that yeah. sound doable? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. All right. You can message me at cool. any point if you end up with questions or concerns. Awesome. Thank you. All right, so this was Emily's first role thing session. I hope that you guys got a lot of really great information from it. And as you can see, it can make really tremendous differences in all parts of the body when we focus on breathing, not just the act of actually breathing, but shoulder tension and low back tension. If you guys have any questions or concerns or are ready to set up your first appointment, reach out to the office.